wait, we're getting a new report in. I have just heard that our Hadrosaur reporter, Corythosaurus, has uh, reported sighting animals in early Earth's history just prior to the Ediacaran period. We now go to Corythosaurus. Tell us, what exciting animals are you viewing right now? Well, here we have the first animal that we've been able to find. A sponge. Yep, that's about it. Here it is, a sponge. You call that an animal? Well, it may not be much to look at, but we certainly do call it an animal. It's not green performing photosynthesis, so it's not an alga or a plant. It doesn't have the cell wall of fungi, and it's not decomposing like the fungi, so it, it's not a fungus. It's one of the keys is is just how big it is. It's it's multicellular. These cells don't live on their own or even in in colonies really. They're aggregating together and the individual is actually the group of all of these cells adhering to this this matrix outside the cells made of collagen, which is the most abundant protein outside cells in all animals. And so this may not look like much, but it's certainly an animal. Does it move? No, it, it really doesn't move. It doesn't have muscle tissue. It, it doesn't have nervous tissue, which could command the muscle tissue. In fact, it doesn't have tissues at all. The sponges are animals which have only the cellular level of complexity. All other animals alive today have at least the tissue level of complexity. So these are the simplest animals alive today and also the first ones which occur in the fossil record. Does it eat? Well, it doesn't really have a mouth, so it, it can speak, and it certainly can eat either, or at least not, not macroscopic food. See, these animals are filter feeding. They are straining the ocean water, looking for microscopic organisms in the plankton. And so while all animals feed on other forms of life, uh, some animals feed on microscopic life as filter feeders. How do they reproduce? Well, they do make sperm and ova. They, they don't really have gonads. They're the only animals that don't. Just any part of their body can make, you know, these sex cells. And then they just release them into the ocean, you know, the same way that the algae do. And somewhere sperm from one sponge may fuse with the ovum from a different sponge, and therefore sexual reproduction will have occurred between individuals which have never even encountered each other or met. So you're telling me that these early animals are having sex with other animals that they've never met? 